A warm greeting. Today is Saturday, July 8, 2023. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. In this video, I will be talking about the latest forecast from the University of Colorado regarding the cyclonic activity anticipated during this hurricane season. This forecast was updated last Thursday, July 6. In fact, the forecast was quite aggressive as the University of Colorado significantly increased the cyclonic activity expected in the Atlantic region. This video will be very interesting, and we will also see some meteorological groups and models that continue to forecast a more active hurricane season than usual, despite the presence of the El Niño phenomenon in the Pacific waters. As is typical, I will start by discussing surface temperature anomalies in the ocean since, as you know, this has a direct relationship with the amount of cyclonic activity that can be anticipated in the Atlantic and the Pacific. Remember that one of the most important factors we monitor during the hurricane season is the ENSO conditions in the eastern Pacific waters. You know that the El Niño phenomenon has developed in the Pacific. Typically, the development of El Niño means that the hurricane season in the eastern Pacific will be more active than normal, and conversely, the El Niño phenomenon usually results in less active hurricane seasons than usual in the Atlantic region. However, this year an unprecedented phenomenon is occurring. Surface temperature anomalies in the tropical and subtropical Atlantic are maintaining historical and well above normal values. This could have a counteracting effect on the effects of the El Niño phenomenon. Remember that El Niño produces strong wind shear over the Caribbean and the southern Gulf of Mexico, but the waters in the tropical Atlantic are so warm that this could be counteracting the effects of El Niño. The changes in the cyclonic activity forecast during this season are directly related to the fact that the Atlantic has remained very warm, and I repeat, at values we have never seen before in recorded history. These warm waters are correlated with hurricane seasons that have been more active than usual. I take this opportunity to mention that this scenario of having the Atlantic so warm while we have the El Niño phenomenon in the Pacific is extremely unusual, and in historical records, there have been few years in which we have had a strong El Niño and the Atlantic so warm. Let's see then what the forecast of the University of Colorado was. On July 6, the University of Colorado forecasted that this hurricane season would have 18 tropical storms, with 9 of them becoming hurricanes, and out of these hurricanes, 4 would reach Category 3, Category 4, or Category 5. When we compare these values with what is normal over the past 30 years, you can see that the normal values are 14 tropical storms, 7 hurricanes, and 3 intense hurricanes. In comparison, we can see that the University of Colorado is forecasting a more active hurricane season than usual, despite the presence of the El Niño phenomenon. Additionally, you can see that it is predicting 160 units of accumulated cyclonic energy. When compared to the average, this also represents an extremely high value. In fact, this forecast was surprising to many meteorologists because historically, when we have the El Niño phenomenon, it almost guarantees that the hurricane season will be less active than usual. But this year is very atypical, and there are several factors that the University of Colorado analyzed in its forecast, which I will be discussing in the next few minutes. I wanted to let you know that this is the third forecast published by the University of Colorado for 2023. When compared to the forecasts from April, June, and last Thursday, we can see that the University of Colorado has been increasing the expectation of tropical storms anticipated for this year. They have also been increasing the number of hurricanes and major hurricanes expected during this hurricane season. This is due to the following factors that we will be discussing. First, the University of Colorado mentions that surface ocean temperatures in the tropical and subtropical Atlantic are at historical values. When compared to hurricane seasons that have been very active, you can see that there is almost a perfect correlation between the current anomalies and seasons that have been more active than usual. This correlation is so strong that the University of Colorado considers it an important factor for the increase in cyclonic activity anticipated for this year. Additionally, the tropical region of Africa has experienced above normal precipitation during the month of June. Typically, when we have anomalies of higher precipitation in the tropical region of Africa, it means that strong tropical waves may be emerging during the peak of the season. Furthermore, this reduces the presence of Saharan dust, which, as you know, inhibits cyclonic activity. This is another important factor, as during the most active hurricane seasons in history, we typically observe above normal precipitation in the tropical region of Africa during the summer. In the green and blue colors, we can see the highest precipitation anomalies reported during the last month. Another very important factor, as you may know, is that during the month of June, two tropical storms formed in the tropical Atlantic region. Tropical storm bred impacted the Lesser Antilles, and we also had tropical storm Cindy. 
The University of Colorado comments that although there is no direct relationship between the early formation of storms and cyclonic activity for the rest of the season, there is a correlation that when we see cyclonic development in the tropical Atlantic during the month of June, it is a precursor that conditions could be more favorable for cyclone formation between the Caribbean and Africa. Historically, years that have seen the early development of tropical storms tend to be years with higher cyclonic activity in the Atlantic. In fact, this year is the first time that two tropical storms have formed in the tropical Atlantic during the month of June. The other years with early development were 1933, 1979, and 2017, when we saw the formation of a tropical storm in June. Of these seasons, 1933 and 2017 were hyperactive hurricane seasons, while the 1979 season was close to normal. On the other hand, the University of Colorado comments that when we analyze temperature anomalies in the oceans, the analogous years are 1951, 1969, 1987, 2004, 2005, and 2006. In these years, we saw the development of a strong El Niño and also had warmer temperatures than usual in the Caribbean and the tropical Atlantic region. However, it is important to note that the current anomalies in the Atlantic are so high that even these analogous years significantly differ from the current conditions. However, on average, you can see that these hurricane seasons had cyclonic activity above normal. Although it is important to mention that these analogous years showed varied results, from hurricane seasons like 2005 when we had 28 storms, 15 hurricanes, and 7 intense hurricanes, to seasons like 1987 when we only had 7 tropical storms, 3 hurricanes, and 1 major hurricane. This gives us an indication that, as we have mentioned in the past few weeks, this forecast for the 2023 hurricane season is highly uncertain. This is specifically due to the record-breaking warm temperatures in the Atlantic combined with the El Niño phenomenon, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, which are conditions we have not seen in recorded history. I repeat, there is a lot of uncertainty in this forecast, and it will be very interesting to see how cyclonic activity behaves during this year. As I mentioned, the forecast from the University of Colorado is quite surprising, mainly because the development of a very strong El Niño is expected in the Pacific. As I mentioned in previous videos, remember that the effects of El Niño in reducing cyclonic activity mostly occur in the Caribbean region, where El Niño produces stronger wind shear than normal, which reduces cyclonic activity in this area. Take a look at the region between the Caribbean and Africa, where the effects of El Niño are usually milder. As I have mentioned in recent months, it is anticipated that cyclonic activity could be focused between the Caribbean and Africa this year. Possibly, the highest number of storms and hurricanes we will see will be in this area and towards the southeastern United States this year. We can also see the effects of El Niño in the following graph. The blue color represents the years when we have had El Niño, and how cyclonic activity tends to decrease across the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. However, notice that the tropical and subtropical Atlantic region has little effect on cyclonic activity in this area. Furthermore, the extremely warm temperatures in the Atlantic are often a very important factor for increased cyclonic activity in the subtropical and tropical Atlantic. That's why experts suggest that cyclonic activity is likely to be strongly focused in this area. However, this does not mean that the Gulf of Mexico, Central America, and the Caribbean will not be at risk. Remember that a single hurricane could cause significant damage in these areas. We all need to be prepared during this hurricane season. Let's also discuss some forecasts from other groups. I want you to see the following graph where we have the forecast from different agencies and specialized groups for the hurricane season. Notice that there is a trend among the groups to increase the anticipated cyclonic activity for this year. All of them have updated their forecasts and show higher activity than usual. Also, remember that the European model predicts a fairly active season. In fact, the UK Meteorological Office is anticipating a hyperactive hurricane season. Before the start of the hurricane season, most groups and agencies were forecasting a near-normal hurricane season for 2023. However, the new updates in July and June now show a potentially more active hurricane season than usual. This is a significant change from the forecast we had in May. For example, one of the groups that updated its forecast was Tropical Storm Risk. They have revised their forecast, now anticipating 17 tropical storms, 8 hurricanes, and 3 major hurricanes. It is a forecast very similar to the University of Colorado's, indicating a more active season than usual. In fact, one of the main reasons for the increase in anticipated cyclonic activity is precisely the early formation of Tropical Storm Brett and Tropical Storm Cindy at the beginning of the hurricane season. Additionally, take a look at the latest forecast from the European model, which is predicting 16 tropical storms when the normal number is 12. They are also forecasting 9 hurricanes when the normal number is 6. Furthermore, 
global models continue to forecast above average precipitation in the region between the Caribbean and Africa and just west of Africa. This would imply increased rainfall activity and potentially a signal that cyclones this year are focusing and moving through this region. This could put the Greater Antilles, the Bahamas, and the state of Florida at greater risk. This is precisely the forecast from the North American models. When compared to other models, such as CANSIPS, you can also see that an above-average rainfall activity is anticipated in this area. Similarly, the CFS model predicts that the tropical and subtropical Atlantic region may experience above-average rainfall during the peak of the season. In fact, these forecasts of increased rainfall activity in this area align with what I mentioned earlier, that this region is where we typically observe higher cyclonic activity when the Atlantic has above-average surface temperatures. And although, to the surprise of many, the forecast from the University of Colorado is very aggressive, some meteorologists believe that the El Niño phenomenon should reduce cyclonic activity. It is important to mention that historically, we have had years where cyclonic activity has been significant in the Atlantic despite the development of a strong El Niño in the Pacific. For example, the hurricane seasons of 1896 and 1899 were seasons with considerable cyclonic activity in the Atlantic Ocean Basin, while we had a strong El Niño phenomenon in the Pacific during those years. Historically, we have seen that we have had quite active hurricane seasons when we have a strong El Niño in the Pacific. Possibly, this year could follow a similar pattern. Remember that the most reputable forecasters are saying that the forecast for this season is highly uncertain, and we still don't know whether the warm temperatures in the Atlantic will dominate, favoring cyclone formation, or if the strong El Niño will dominate with its strong wind shear. Basically, we have two phenomena that will be influencing cyclonic activity in the Atlantic in opposite ways, and it remains to be seen which one will prevail. Well, that would be all for today's video. Remember, to stay informed during this hurricane season, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you are watching this video on YouTube, go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell icon to receive notifications when I upload new videos. Well, with that, I bid you farewell and I'll see you in the next video.